impact. It has impact. And, and uh, to use the buzzword of the day, it's sustainable. So it's not just um, the one-off thing, which organizations are often kind of looking for, and we need to fix this problem. It has impact, as again, going back to this multi-layered thing, impact at a number of different levels, but it's something that will, will last. It may need topping up every so often, but it doesn't just kind of become a quick fix. It can actually operate at a more sustainable, longer term, de developmental kind of a tool. And, and because it's behaviorally based, and we can put in surveys that help ask people about their confidence to do these things, and because it's behaviorally based, you can then put measures in to see what, what changes. Um, you can then see how sustainable that impact is. But I, I chose the word impact because it's like, for the individuals, there's, there's an impact. It may be at, a, at an emotional level, it could be at a cognitive level, um, but it tends not to leave people untouched. The face-to-face -face provides a uh, in-the-moment kind of catalyst, I think, for the participants. When it's live, you know, you, it's hard to not be present, and, and you see things in a, in, a, in a more holistic way. You're able to watch not just what's going on on stage, you watch your colleagues, you do a whole bunch of things like that. So, you know, if you, if you can, it's always good, um, I think, where possible to have some of the face-to-face -face stuff. On the other hand, the film interventions that I see bees doing more now, if it's facilitated film, then you get the ability to see the interaction, but then, then there's actually some consistency around how the characters are presented, how the story is created. If it's only film, and that's the work we're doing with St. George now, I still think that the narratives are so strong and they're so engaging that even with a minor amount of facilitation afterwards, there's enough for someone to go, okay, that, that, that had some meaning to me that makes me um, want to adopt that behavior or change my existing behaviors because uh, th there's an emotional drive to it, not just someone sitting there boringly telling you traditional e-learning kinds of stuff. So they each have a place. If they can be integrated together, like I did with my PhD intervention, where you can um, kind of do a building process and use the film as, as a, both a, a behavioral reinforcement and, and as a, a mechanism to pe improve people's self in its own right, that's great. Um, so they can be independent, but if you can do all things together, then you get the, the, the maximum bang for the buck. And I should have said earlier that self-efficacy enhancement is really based around three, cre three key principles. One is an act of mastery, so giving people a chance to practice the challenging task. Um, secondly, it's about um, uh, learning vicariously, role modeling. So I learn as much by watching somebody else as I learn by doing it myself, which is the act of mastery. And the third is through feedback and coaching. So and any one of those things, and if you can do them collectively, have the potential to increase someone's self-efficacy, which will then in turn lead to a change in, in, in behavior and, and ultimately performance. So if you can have sort of face-to-face -face stuff through forum theater, if you can have rehearsed reality, if you can have a film, then you're getting all three things. It's like a supercharge. Um, you may find that if it's just rehearsed reality, there's more in the, in the role modeling and less, well, it'd be personal mastery, perhaps, oh, there's feedback and coaching. Probably rehearsed reality in some ways captures all three things the best, um, but each of, each of the different forms has some benefit that way.